Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about the Creality Ender 3 3D printer and why I think it might be the best value for your dollar in 3D printing. So if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that I'm a fan of a lot of different STEM concepts. So programming is always a focus on my channel, but also Arduino and hobby electronics and home automation, things like that are a big focus for my channel. And this video originally was going to be me building a 3D printer from scratch. But honestly, I started pricing out the bill of materials that I would need to build a 3D printer from scratch. And I saw the Ender 3 3D printer was available available at a lower price than just me getting the raw materials would cost. And I've been super impressed and pleased with this printer since I got it. So I decided I was going to make a video talking to you guys about why I decided to go with this specific printer setup, how difficult it was to use and what considerations I put into making this the printer I bought instead of a different type of printer. So first and arguably the most important fact about this printer when you're thinking about starting a new hobby but you're not that experienced in it yet and you're not exactly sure how much time and effort you want to put into the hobby is the price. And this entire printer, I also got it bundled with a spool of filament which usually adds like $30 to the cost. I got the printer and a spool of filament under 200 US dollars. And this is just, it's crazy relative to, I remember when home 3D printers first sort of became commercially available, still weren't real popular. This would have been around 2012 when my friend got one of the early maker bots. And I remember him and his dad going on about how it was nearly a thousand dollars. And honestly, the setup was complicated. Things went wrong all the time. And it was still, uh, I would say, arguably lower quality than what I got for $200. So I'm not naive. I know $200 is still a significant investment for a lot of people. It's not chump change. You certainly have to know that you really want to be able to 3D print things to buy a $200 item. But for someone looking to get into a new hobby, potentially use it to prototype things, Things or even start an online business. It's really not that high of a barrier to entry. So roughly $200 for a good kit, um, which I will leave a link to uh, in the description below if you'd like to get the same one as me. I'm going to talk about the actual like setup, ease of use, and how long it takes to build like cool stuff a little bit later in the video. But I did want to show because I'm a child and I thought this was really cool that in just a few hours of getting familiar with my printer and a few test builds, I was able to start printing the pieces for what became a like life-size uh, Halo 4 Magnum, like from the Halo video games. And I switched between black and white filament um, about halfway through printing the pieces out. And I just thought it looked really cool. And so I think the next thing I'd like to do to talk about this printer um, is actually to give a little bit of background of the two main primary types of 3D printers available for at-home use and hobbyists and why I think the Creality 3 is a little better, Ender 3 is a little better for beginners. Um, the two main types of 3D printer, which if you've done any research into the industry, you probably already know this, um, are actually filament deposition printers, which is what the Ender 3 uh, printer I have is. And the other one is a uh, resin reservoir printer. So this essentially is a little bit newer and maybe you're not as familiar with these, but it's essentially filling a reservoir with the 3D printer liquid essentially. Um, and then a bed of lights basically raise up and they harden your print one layer at a time as they come through a full um, resin reservoir. So these are a little bit more complicated to use, arguably, they have more steps. Um, they tend, actually, the resin printers tend to have a little bit higher quality at baseline um, because it's not counting on a mechanical arm moving uh, from layer to layer. So they are typically thought of as slightly more precise and actually their cost tends to be just a little bit higher. Um, I will probably end up getting like the Mars uh, Elegoo uh, 3 resin printer eventually because I am interested in testing out both methods. Um, 
but I read a lot of reviews and a lot of people that said the resin printer is slightly more challenging to get started with. It also can give off a bit of an odor, which some people described as overpowering. Some people said they barely noticed it. So just something to be aware of. If you are in like an apartment setting, you could be giving off odors that could potentially be an issue for like your landlord or anything. Um, but then the, the nice thing about the filament deposition printer is that it's very simple to set up. It's very simple to get started with, and it's very simple to use. Also, there are so many good free 3D slicing softwares, and Creality has one, as well as Cura's, I think is called Ultimaker. I will leave a link to uh, where you can download the slicing software. But this means you can take the online libraries of thousands of STL files, 3D essentially model files, and slice them into a 3D print. And you don't have to be familiar with how to set up supports internally. Um, the software actually knows how to slice it in a way that will provide good support. And you can manually tweak how solid to make it or how hollow. Um, and so overall, I'm just very impressed with the open source free uh, online community available. And to be clear, those things work with both. So uh, kind of the method of loading in a file and a project to 3D printer works really well with resin and filament deposition. But I love filament deposition because the cleanup takes next to no time. Even if you mess up a build, the cleanup is very easy because you get this as soon as it's no longer hot, the filament turns into solid particulate matter, which is easy to pick up. It's easy to pick off. It's easy to scrape off the tray. And so cleanup is a breeze. If I only have five or 10 minutes to start a build before I go to work for the day, I know even if something goes wrong, I'm not going to have a big chaotic mess waiting for me at home. And most resin printers, um, they even if something goes wrong, the resin is self-contained. So you're not likely to have the goo everywhere, but you will have a large remaining reservoir of resin that you need to have behind. And you also have to wash and cure any piece that you make. So in general, if you're an absolute beginner and you're not sure what 3D printer you need, I would recommend a filament bed printer like the Ender 3. Um, but if you're looking for maybe like making miniatures, like mini figures for Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer or anything else, a board game where you want to make really precise pieces, it may be worth you spending the time to get familiar with the resin bed printer because in general, small pieces with fine detail, which you can make with either, will have slightly higher quality at baseline on a resin printer. Now, I know that was a bit of a tangent and not super specific to the Ender 3 and more of sort of like general discussion about the world of 3D printing, but those things, that background is sort of like super important for you to understand before I talk about the actual ease of setup and use of this printer. So for $200, you don't get the kit fully assembled. It does come disassembled, but the entire instructions on how to build it are one page front and back. So it's a total of 12 steps. And honestly, the assembly of this printer is not the easiest thing I've ever built. It's um, sort of on par with like an Ikea set of furniture, like their build it yourself furniture. A lot of the times there are steps where you sort of have to guess at what the instruction manual writer was thinking. Um, but if you're interested in 3D printing, you're probably interested in a lot of sciencey things, and that means you're probably okay at critical thinking. I was able to put it together with next to no trouble in two to three hours. Um, and also, it might have been even faster, but I was taking a lot of footage of myself as I was building it. So on that note, if you'd like to see a full like build along video of me making the printer and talking about it as we go step by step, let me know in the comments below. I can put some of that footage together in a follow up to this video if there's enough interest. But basically two to three hours of assembly and then the entire uh, software install process only takes a few minutes for the Creality um, Slicer program and they give you a USB that has a micro SD card in it um, that you can put files on the USB stick from your computer and put it directly into your 3D printer and just print the um, saved 3D print files from your computer right onto the printer. So after physically building it and powering it up, 
I was able to test all of the axes and heating elements manually with the local LCD display right on the thing. And then within about 10 to 15 minutes of having the printer finished and assembled, I was actually loading a file onto it and starting the print. For a little bit more money, Ender and other 3D model uh, printer manufacturers do sell um, what are called self-leveling beds. And probably the biggest downside to the Ender 3, which I got, um, that's under $200, is that it's a very manual process to level the bed. And you have to make sure that the 3D printer is actually on a level surface, and also that the bed it's printing onto is level. This is super important for having a quality print for making sure you don't get um, levels that are sort of shifting as you print higher and higher. So in general, it's just a sort of manual process of going through and making sure that the nozzle is at zero um, on the Z axis and just touching the bed. And that's sort of how you make sure you're at the right height. But then it also needs to be physically level so that as you go up, up, up on taller pieces, they don't fall over because your bed's not level um, and you don't get sh layer shifting. I found a super cool model of the Halo 4 Magnum from the classic Halo games. It claimed to be life size, which is kind of funny for like a video game to say something's life size, but it does fit really well into the handle, uh, into the hand to hold. This was the first like big thing I attempted to print. It actually prints in like eight different pieces because obviously the 3D printer can't print this entire thing in one piece. Um, and actually I switched between black and white filament on my 3D printer halfway through. But this just is sort of a great example of how with relatively low training, I'm really not formally exposed to 3D printing in any way, using free open source things people left on the internet, I now have a prop that literally for 15 years since I was a little kid, I've been dreaming about having like my own version of a Halo gun. So this is probably a dorky example of why I think these are super cool. But within a few hours, I was able to figure out how to get something like this started. And now obviously each piece and component on a, a build like this takes several hours to actually print. So I don't want you thinking that the day the 3D printer shows up at your house, you're gonna have like a movie quality video game prop or something like that. But you can start learning the process within a few hours. I'd recommend printing something a little bit smaller. I think the first actual successful complete build that I printed was just, I don't even know if the camera will pick that up, but it was just the L and the T in the LeMaster Tech logo. And then I sort of printed the same thing inverted. Um, and so I sort of just took a basic shape that was going to be printing straight up. So there wasn't a lot of curves or detailed features. And once that was completed, I moved on to some basic 3d shapes, like a small master chief, uh, helmet, not like wearable or anything like toy sized, but basically this is not a hobby that you have to get into and spend a ton of time before you're able to make anything cool. It's also not a hobby where you have to watch it the whole time. So once you spend the time to understand how your printer works and how to set it up. Once you've made sure the first few layers go down without a hitch, 80% of the time, maybe 90% of the time, you can walk away from a build once it's been printing for 15-ish minutes and you can confidently return hours later and the machine will be doing great. Okay, so again, I didn't intend this to be a very specific how to build and assemble and set up and troubleshoot the Ender 3 Creality uh, 3D printer. If that is something you'd like, I probably do have the enough videos of me building it that we could do a video like that and I could also answer some of the common troubleshooting issues um, if you'd like that in another video. This one was really to introduce you to what I truly feel is the best 3D printer on the market for a beginner looking to start 3D printing without breaking the bank. Under $200 for something that can create pretty darn realistic uh, looking props and 3D models is honestly mind blowing to me. So I hope you found this useful. I hope this format of video is useful. And if you'd like to see any more like this on the channel, just let me know in the comments below. So that is gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you everyone who leaves comments and likes on my videos. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters who have made the growth on the channel possible. As always, thanks for watching. Good luck with your projects. Until next time, bye.